Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and welcome to your sixth Pug tutorial. So in this one I want to talk about the each loop and um, the each loop basically allows you to loop over um, an array or an object and then output HTML. And the each loop is the same as the for loop except that the for loop is a different name. So each and for these two loops are exactly the same, they just got a different name. Okay, so keep that in mind. Alright, so let's get right into this. Um, just keep in mind that um, I have the pug watcher running, which means that when I save this index pug file, it's going to output that inside the HTML directory. Okay, so if I was to type out, okay, doctor HTML, then add the basic HTML tags, head and then body. Saving this gives me this in this file right there. Okay, so Let's start with this h slash for loop. I'll begin with an h1 tag and we'll just say, okay, for slash h loop. Okay, now down here, we're gonna use the h loop um, to output the numbers one to five on the actual, um, oh, you know, in the, in the HTML. So the syntax is as follows. You start with the h keyword followed by the, um, the name of the temporary variable that will hold um, each value. So for example, each and then n, short for number, and then you write out in. So you're saying each n or each number in your array. So we'll type out one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. And now inside here, we'll just indent this and then we'll type out um, we'll make a new paragraph tag and just put n inside there. Okay, actually we need to put an equal sign that way we actually output some HTML. Uh, sorry, um, the equals allows you to output the actual value instead of um, the number n. So if I was to get rid of this equals and save this one, we get n, 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 n. Having the equals there means that it's going to interpret this n as the actual variable up here. So now saving this gives us that right there. One, two, three, four, five. And this is done only with a simple loop. So obviously this is um, quite useful for dealing with the data especially, okay? Now, let's just, um, let's just also look at getting the value as well as the index in your array. So we have here the actual values, okay? If I was to change this to the number 50 for example saving this gives us 50 and then 234 so these are the actual values now to get the actual index of whatever the um, the item is at that current point in time you put a comma here a comma and then your variable for the index I'll just call mine I so now the current index is stored inside the I variable okay now this means that we can actually do this, we can say, okay, n, and then put a plus, and then we can just say something like dash, and then plus i. So now we're gonna see the value, and then a dash, and then the index. And now, saving this gives us this in the output, 50 at index zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. All right, so that's how to access the value and index. Now just keep in mind that this is basically just JavaScript here. I can actually declare an array outside of um, outside of this this each loop here. So I can put a dash here and declare a JavaScript array. For example, let's just make a new constant and call this one names equal to an array of strings of names. So for example, we'll have one for Dom, Sophie, and then Mark. So we have we have three names here. Now, I can actually go inside here and replace that one right there with instead names. So now it's going to loop through everything in this names um, array. So saving this gives us that right there. Dom at index 0, Sophie 1, and then Mark and 2. So pretty cool stuff. Um, so that's the arrays. This thing also actually works on objects as well. So if I was to get rid of this array here, and instead, um, let's just put something like 
maybe grade. So make a new object called grades equal to an object literal and we'll put some um, some grades for your university courses inside here. For example, let's just say, okay, we'll say um, for web web development or web dev, you got 85%. All right. For something like um, software design, you got 76%. So we have two properties in this um, in this object. All right. So now if we save this, we get Okay, that didn't work. Why not? Let's see the output. What does it say? Length of under... Oh, okay, of course. So, got to put grades inside here. Alright. So now, saving this one gives us that in the um, output. We get, we get the actual... Um, the value and then the index. So, in this case here, the index will be the actual property name and the value will be the actual value of that property. So we're saying, okay, 85 for web dev, then that for software design. All right. So um, if I was to actually change this from each into four and save this, we get the exact same result. Let's just change this from 85 to 100 to just prove this. Save it again and we get 100 right there. So the each and the four are just the same thing with a different name. Okay. Now this thing actually it also comes with an else, and the else will run whenever there's actually no values to iterate through. So if I was to go down here and go back and just say okay else, all right. Down here, let's just put a strong tag, and inside there we'll just say, we'll just say something like. Um, no loop possible or maybe maybe no values are here okay oh let's get rid of those quotes All right so now what's going to happen is if there are no values to actually loop through it's going to print out no values are here let's just get rid of this grades all right get rid of this grades and inside um, here we'll put an empty array so an empty array saving this gives us boom that right there strong no values are here so it skips this part and just says okay we can't do anything so print out no values are here all right and that is how you can use the for slash each loop within pug thank you for watching and i'll see you later